Welcome back. I've had people tell me, programming looks so complicated, has all these weird symbols and weird names, and I don't know where to start. Well, maybe we can simplify some things. This video covers how to organize a program in C. I'll also make some comment about comments. Let's start off with the first lab assignment. I have a printout of paycheck.cpp. and Let's see how the thing is organized. Right at the top, I have a comment block that has the title of the program. So I'm going to put title here. So this right here is a block that it just has a bunch of comments that I put in the name of the program, my name, the class, the inputs for the program, and oh, uh, outputs. Pretty cool. C and C++ use include statements to help the compiler put the program together. So Right there is my include statements. The next thing I have is my int main. And int main goes all the way from an open curly brace all the way down to a closed curly brace. So I here's my open curly brace. And right there is the closed curly brace from there down there to the bottom. See that? Isn't that cool? Okay, next thing I have, I'm going to declare my variables. So I declared hours, pay rate, regular hours. So here's my variables. Okay, there's my variables. Then I have input. I have process and output. And that's pretty simple. Maybe this chart looks a little better. At the top, I have my title block and my include statements. Then here's int main. I'm listing my variables. Then here's the input, process, output, and at the bottom I have a return zero and a closed curly brace. Comments are written in a human language to help you or the next person better understand what the computer language is doing. Put good comments in your code, even if you think that no one else will ever see them. There have been times I was deeply involved in a project and knew everything about the project, and I didn't think I needed to comment my code because I know it so well. Then I started a new project and later returned to my first project and spent an extra amount of time trying to figure out what I did in the first place. So put in the comments even if you think no one else will ever see them. The C style comments start with slash star and end with a star slash. So you can even start with a slash star, put in several lines of comments and end with a star slash. C++ style comments start with slash slash and end at the end of line. Most of the modern C compilers will also take the C++ style comments. So you can kind of mix them and match them in C++ and most of the time you can do the same thing in a C language. Here is a sample of a title block comment. I have the name of the program, the version, the date, the name of the programmer, the company, or in this case is going to be the class you're taking, and the inputs and the outputs. This will help next time you end up opening up a file, you don't have to read the whole program to find out what's going on. You can just see it right at the top of the program. English essays either use a blank line between paragraphs or indent each paragraph with a few spaces at the beginning. When you use several lines of code that are related to each other to do a specific task, put a blank line and a comment to briefly describe the code. You can also put comments on individual lines of code. If you did anything that's kind of tricky or might take some extra time figuring out what it did, make sure you put a comment on that line. The include statement is used to merge code from some other file into your program as the program is being compiled. Header files get their name because the pound include statement is placed at the top of the program. Although you may not believe it, C and C++ make programming easier by providing header files. Here are a couple samples for include files. The C language uses pound include open angle bracket stdio dot h close angle bracket. That's for standard IO. 
We also might have something like pound include open angled bracket math dot h close angled bracket. We'll need that for things like square root, cosine, sine, tangent, things like that. C++ uses things like pound include open angled bracket, IO stream, close angled bracket. We need that for doing the input and output from the keyboard. We also might have things like pound include open angled bracket, math close angled bracket. Now one thing you might notice is look up at the C, it has math.h, but C++ just has math. C++ uses math and then they do a few extra things, then they go ahead and include math.h also. Here's what happens for the difference between using the quotes and the angle brackets. If the header file is located in your project directory, then you use the quotes. If the header file is located in the compiler's include directory, then use angle brackets. So normally you're going to be using angle brackets unless you create your own header files. Console applications, using the keyboard and the screen, start off with some version of int main. The simplest one is just int main, open parentheses, close parentheses, and then start your program with a curly brace. A little bit fancier version is int main, open parentheses, then int argc, comma, character star, argv, open, close, square brackets, and then a close parentheses, and then start your program with a curly brace. Those are so that we can collect information from another program or from a command line. So you really don't need those right now. So you could just start off with int main, open parentheses, close parentheses. Main is considered a function. Though functions can return data. So if I have int main at the bottom of my program, I'll have a return statement with an integer. For example, return zero. You could have some other value there to indicate maybe there is a problem with the program. So typically return zero means everything worked out fine and return one or return two would indicate possibly some type of an error code. If you don't want to return an integer, you can say void main. Then down at the bottom, you can still have a return statement, but you cannot return a value. Here comes the part of the program where I declare my variables and constants. I start by putting down a data type and then a name and a semicolon. I can also initialize the variable at the same time. For example, here I say int count equal 20 semicolon. I can also declare constants. Constants, once declared, cannot be changed by the program when it's running. Here I've declared const double tax rate equals 0 0.0875 semicolon. I also put a comment there to indicate that the 0 0.0875 is really 8.75%. It'll make it easier for somebody to figure out what that is later. Now I want to input the data that is going to be processed. Here comes my prompt and my input. It's really important that you put a prompt. If you just start and try to input from the keyboard, all you're going to do is have a flashing cursor on the screen and nobody is going to know what to do. So here's the prompt. In C++, I put hours worked colon space and then my close quote. I put the space there so that the input doesn't run right up next to the uh, the prompt message. After I put the prompt, then I can read from the keyboard. It's very similar in the C language. Instead of using C out, I have to use printf. Also, I have to use those parentheses. Now I need to process the data. Here is where I take my input data, do all my math computations on it or wherever I need to do, and then I'm ready to do the output. To output using C++, I'll use the Cout statement with less than less than. In C, I'll use printf with the open parentheses and the close parentheses. In the second example, I declared a character array called message and I set it to say, you pass the test. In C++, I can say Cout less than less than and then the name of the character array and a semicolon. In C language, I'll say printf and then 
first thing I do is I have a format string so it says quote percent s quote the percent s says I have a string that's following in C++ you have to do a few extra things to identify how many digits you want displayed after a decimal place we'll need to include IO manip that stands for IO manipulation this example shows how to output two digits past the decimal place using C++. I have to include IO stream just to use C out. I also have to include IO manip so that I can define how many digits past the decimal. C out has a set IOS flags for IOS colon colon fixed. It also has a set IOS flags colon colon show point and then I can say C out less than less than set precision open parentheses to close parentheses to identify two places past the decimal. Then I have paycheck which is a double and then the double will have two places past the decimal regardless of whether I have something like 30 cents or no cents or whatever. ENDL is at the end of line to move the cursor to the next line on the screen. Make sure you type the last character of ENDL as a small l and not a 1. So it stands for end of line, not end 1. The C language uses printf. I also have to make sure I include standard io.h because I'm using printf or scanf. So then it says double paycheck equals 183.75. In the format string, percent means I want to format some data. LF stands for long float because I'm using a double but in front of it I put a point two saying I want two places past the decimal. Backslash N is to move the cursor to the next line. Make sure you put in a backslash N and not a forward slash N. If you put a forward slash N, forward slash N is going to show up on the screen instead of moving the cursor to the next line. Well that's all for now and good luck with your C or C++ program, at least now you know how to organize it and put it together. Have fun. Programming is cool.